OK, hello, this is uh, Natalie Quacks again. Just thought we'd have another look at this Fibonacci thing. Um, a couple of people commented that I could have used a, a recursive function, so I thought I'd do that. And also show you how to do um, a little GUI interface for this program as well. So I'm going to start off by doing the, uh, the function. So I'm going to call it Fibonacci. Um, so if number's less than 2, return num else and this is where we call the function again recursively num equals not g num minus 1 So just to show you how that works, if you call Fibonacci of 3, it's going to call itself on 2, which is Fibonacci minus 1, sorry, num minus 1, and 1, which is minus 2. Now, Fibonacci of 1 is going to be 0 because it says here, return the same number back if it's something less than 2. On this side, though, we're going to have to do something with that 2, so that's going to go to a Fibonacci of 1 and a Fibonacci of 0. The 0 is going to return 0, the 1 is going to return 1, and then we just end all those up. So, sorry, that's, I made a mistake there, that should be 1. So that 1 is going to, this, this 1 and the 0 is going to be passed up to here, which is going to be passed up to there, which is just 1, and that 1 from that side is going to be passed over there, which gives you the 2. And we're starting at the 0 here, of course, because that's the way the computer really does things. So the uh, Fibonacci for 3 is actually 2. Kind of confusing that, but that's the way it works. We could make it more sort of uh, common sense by, like we did before, by subtracting 1, but we'll, we'll stick with this way for now. It makes more sense, really. OK, so we've got that. That should work. Now we want to do the uh, GUI thing here as well, so we'll just have a go at that. So the first thing we need to do is import the TK into modules because that will allow us to actually make a GUI. Then we need a root window. Whoops. Then can give that root window a title. Sorry, I'm making some silly mistakes here. <laughs> Geometry means that we set how big we want the window to be by default. Then we're going to say that we want to make a frame within that window, which we call app. We're going to set a grid up within that as well, which is where we're going to put the elements that we're creating. I'm going to make a little label first of all. Call it anything you want really, but I've just called mine input LBL. So that's a, a label type of object. It's going to be inside this app frame that we're setting up. Um, the text is going to be enter a number. So that's fairly straightforward. Then we need to tell it where to put this within the grid. So we want it we want it on the first row. Could have gone 
zero for that actually. Let's call it the double TM. So it's a button. Bring it up. I'm just going to comment this out for now because I haven't actually written this part. But set the command so I'll leave that for now because we haven't set the command up yet but button so put that underneath So we could actually put it back in the entry, but it's probably a bit neater to do it this way. App width equals 20. Let's make it give ourselves a bit of room. Height equals 2. I'm going to say just because it makes it look a little bit less crowded. And make a grid for that. something. Okay, so there I've got my little button. Um, if I press that, I can enter some text and some numbers in there. Again, nothing much is going to happen. Okay, but look, that's looking okay. to do now is actually make this do something when we when we enter the, the buttons. So I said before we need a button command so the button command needs to actually take the the number that we've entered and, and put it into the 
Fibonacci function. So if we go for something like start fib, okay, that'll do. And then we need to write a little function up here that will handle that for us. So if we go def start fib, and it's not going to take a parameter. The first thing it's going to do is um, it's going to we're going to have to get this number that the user's put in. So let's go for num equals to equals input whoops sorry my typing is terrible today input box get ok I don't know why I put that in there there's no need for that ok so that's just taking it in as a string at the moment. Um, so we do need to do something about that before we actually try and do any, any math with it. Um, the other thing is we might as well delete everything from the text output box because anything hanging around in there at the moment is, is going to be uh, overwritten. Okay. So what we need to do now is just We'll be careful here by the, about this and we'll do a try. So I'm going to try to make num into an integer. So if the person has typed in something that won't work, we don't want the program to crash completely. So if there's an exception to that, if there's an error message, we're just going to go text dot insert. So that'll happen if, if the number isn't a uh, if the if what's been entered into the, the entry box is not um, going to work. Other than that, we can go ahead and actually call our function. So text.insert. Sorry. Okay. Not. So I'm just means we're starting at the beginning of the box, and then we're going to have to turn it into a string again before we put it in there. And there, so let's just see if that works. So if we put in a number like with the real, all we've already tried was three, so the only answer that should be. So there we go, the Fibonacci number 3 is 2, and uh, if we go for a larger one like 10, which we were working on the other day, that was 55, that seems to make sense, that matches up with what we are doing before. Okay, so there you have a nice simple um, program that uses a GUI, uses a recursive function to, to work out Fibonacci sequences. Okay, I hope that's been useful. Um, I will stick this code uh, somewhere um, in the comments where you can download it just in case you want to have a look. And thanks very much for watching.